Hi, welcome to the second video of Past Paper Solution. This is at Excel IEL Unit 4 2019. So let's start. Question number 15. Uh, the image shows the path of a pine and path of a proton in a detector. Both particles move from left to right. The draw diagram drawn to scale pine coming down proton going up explain how the image can be used to deduce that the charge on the pine is negative clearly if you see that the both are of the particle both uh, the particles proton and pine are moving uh, rightward and uh, they are moving in the detector so we have a detector and that means in the detector we should have a magnetic field and when these charges are uh, moving in the magnetic field then we have a curved path meaning they are experiencing some uh, magnetic force that causes these particles to move in a circular path so that's why we can say that the pine should have uh, a charge on it that's why it has a curve because if the pine would have a neutral then it should have you know move uh, straight without any curvature and it will not be detected okay so that's how you can write the part of the both particles are curved and that's and of course they are moving in a magnetic field and it is moving in opposite to the proton proton we know that it has a positive charge part b the proton and the pines were produced by the decay of a lambda particle state the charge of lambda particle indeed uh, it's quite a straightforward question because pine and proton are decaying in results of uh, 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 in results of decaying of lambda and pine has a negative charge proton has a positive charge that means lambda should have no charge so lambda should be neutral or zero charge or neutral so that's what you can say In the detector, there is a magnetic field of flux density 1.7 T Tesla, a state direction of the magnetic field. So, if you need to see the direction of the magnetic field, so you need to go back to the diagram. So, you see, this is the diagram, and you can uh, always. Uh, uh, find the direction of uh, force acting on the charged particle or direction of magnetic field using Fleming left hand rule. So the left hand rule suggests that for on your left hand, your first finger always points towards the magnetic field and your second finger always towards the uh, current or maybe the flow of charge or direction of the motion. Direction of motion and the thumb always represent direction of force f now if you apply these uh, Fleming left hand rule for proton so you adjust your left hand so that your second finger should be uh, rightward because the proton is coming from left and going towards right so your second finger should be rightward and the curvature is is uh, you know going up that means this curvature is suggesting that the force is acting here so adjust your thumb the force one in that direction clearly you will see that the b uh, the the first finger will be pointing into the page so you say that because the b is pointing so you just write that the field is into the page into the page so here you write into the page the image is the image is half full size determine the momentum of the pine by taking measurement from the image remember if you see the image it was written that the image was drawn to a scale and they are giving you scale as half 
full size half full size means there is a ratio of your measurement and actual measurement is 1 is to 2 into ratio so now this is the picture that you can see so what do you need to do you you will have to you know measure the radius radius from the diagram r so the easiest uh, way of measuring radius is you can measure the radius of the pine because the radius of proton is difficult from this picture because it's is it has a large curvature so you cannot find the radius of the proton but you can find radius of the pine from this diagram you can use your compass and uh, just try to find some point somewhere so that you can you know uh, you can use your compass to make this circle complete circle and then use your ruler to measure that distance i cannot give you in this diagram but i did it in the in the image that i received and i found that that radius that radius was around 7.5 centimeter that means uh, the image was uh, half full in size so the actual radius you need to show this number whether you get 7.5 7.4 or maybe you got some other number it depends on your compass and situation so 7.5 centimeter so radius should be 7.5 times 2 so r is equal to 15 centimeter or r is equal to 0 0.15 meter this is the radius and we need to find the momentum of this particle so you know that uh, in this case the magnetic force acting on the particle is basically a, uh, a centripetal force so m v square over r which is a centripetal force acting and this should be a magnetic force b e v where e is the charge on the particle and uh, of course this v one get cancelled you can send r to the other side so m v is equal to b e r and uh, m v is nothing but the momentum so p is equal to b e r now b is 1.7 times e is a charge on on the pine which is as same as charge on the proton so 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and uh, r is the radius which is 0 0.15 and then you can calculate the momentum which is uh, 4.08 into 10 to the power minus 20 newton second this is the momentum of pine or you can say pp p pi the momentum of proton is also known a sketch the labeled vector diagram to represent the momenta of the three particle which three particles they are talking about they are talking about lambda that decays and that gives you pine and the proton so because law of conservation of momentum momentum before collision must be equal to momentum after collision uh, lambda was a neutral particle and all the particle was moving rightward that means the initial momentum of lambda should be uh, something like this so you should draw an arrow showing that this is the momentum of lambda and then uh, the sum of the momentum of pine and the proton should be equal to uh, momentum of the lambda so uh, you know that the the proton has a larger curvature so momentum of momentum of proton is greater than momentum of pines so but they are not uh, moving horizontally so their momentum are making some angle so you can draw uh, starting from here something like this a small arrow showing momentum of pine and then this is momentum of proton so the uh, arrow for the proton momentum should be greater than pine momentum and sum of these two momentum is equal to the initial momentum so clearly you can see that uh, the, uh, we don't have any vertical momentum total vertical momentum is always zero in this diagram that's how you can prove it 
Question number 16, a simple electric generator consists of a coil that is rotated within a uniform magnetic field as shown. The graph shows the variation of EMF E with time T as the coil is rotated at a steady frequency. So this is a graph generated by the generator, EMF produced by the generator. Okay, so explain why the value of E varies between a maximum value and a zero value. So if you see the behavior of uh, the graph, we have a maximum and then we have a minimum. And after that, we again, the EMF increase, but in opposite direction, it's all about position of the coil. Right now, if you see the, uh, the coil is uh, horizontal and the coil is placed in the magnetic field. So there is a flux linked with the with this coil. So because some lines are going something like that. Currently, when the flux change, you know that the, the rate of change of flux uh, causes an induced EMF. So induced EMF E is directly proportional to rate of change of flux. D5 d by dt or you can say dn5 by dt flux linkage so same thing so that's what you need to explain right that the, there is a flux linkage of the coil and of course the amount of emf is proportional to rate of change of flux moreover at the at the present state the coil is horizontal so the flux at that moment will be zero but as soon as the coil starts rotating and this 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 coil uh, let's just give the name a b the conductor a b starts coming up it's it will be coming up and now as it starts rotating this conductor a b start cutting the line that means the max uh, the flux is maximum the rate of change of flux is maximum when it is rotating from horizontal to the vertical so we have a maximum and then as it keeps moving up moving up moving up and then EMF keep decreasing because rate of change of flux is decreasing. Less number of line is cutting as the conductor AB coming up. Now the conductor is, is here, something like that, and then it is vertical. So at that moment, as it moves to, to its next quarter from vertical to horizontal position, at that moment, the conductor AB, which is here, it moves parallel to the magnetic field. At that moment, there is almost no EMF, which is showing by that point. So that's why we have a change in uh, uh, EMF from maximum to minimum. And of course, if it keeps moving for the next quarter, then it will be moving in opposite direction of the magnetic field. So we have EMF again, starting from minimum to going maximum. And this is the one half cycle. So th this AB conductor now, comes at that point a b but you need to explain only these two points so that's how you can write all these points in your answer part b i explain why the area under the graph represent the change in flux linkage Clearly, we are given a graph E EMF against time. So you know that according to Faraday's law, produced EMF is equal to a rate of change of flux. So N d phi by dt, the general formula. If you send dt to the other side, so E dt is equal to N d phi and E dt if you see whatever the shape is so edt is basically area and nd5 nd5 this is a flux linkage so area is equal to flux linkage of flux linked determine the magnetic flux density between the poles of the magnet number of turns on the coil is 500 area of the coil is 2.5 times to the power minus 3 we need to find uh, magnetic flux density that means value of b so clearly we have that the area is equal to flux linkage remember flux linkage is uh, uh, n d5 this is for uh, number of turn 
and then uh, area is equal to the total coming uh, the total formula is is is, is uh, the the flux linkage is b a n which is should be equal to the area so now if you see the graph this is the graph which is given in your original question so what we are going to do we are going to find area under this only the first quarter of the motion so clearly you can count the boxes so one two three you can make it four five and then this one and this one make it six so this is six and this is your half make it half so the total number of boxes you have is 6.5 this is the total number of boxes and then you need to find area of only one box this one so the width is uh, the width is uh, one two three four five so this is one millisecond 10 to the power minus 3 and this is 2 volt so area of the one box is 2 times 1 2 2 times 1 times 2 10 to the power minus 3 so the total area so total area will be equal to uh, 6.5 into 2 into 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 so this is length this is breadth one area of one box and then total number of boxes so this is the area which is uh, 2 times 6.5 13 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, yes it should be minus 3 Weber this is the flux linkage and this flux linkage is equal to band B A N so B A N is equal to Uh, 13 into 10 to the power minus 3 so B is equal to 13 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by A into N A is given which is area and is number of turn which is 500 you put these values and divide these numbers so B you will get as uh, 0 0.0104 Tesla or you round it off so B should be equal to 0 0.010 Tesla this is the magnetic field the speed at which the coil rotates is halved I sketch the graph on the axis below to show how new E varies with the time so speed rotation speed is half remember produced emf is directly proportional to rate of change of flux so if a speed is half so that means emf will also be half that means from eight it should start from four the first point plus it is slowed down it is you know it is moving slowly and speed is half so the time should be double so the time should be double that means this point which is at currently at 2.5 it should be at 5 so every quarter cycle should be something like that and then this is another quarter complete at minus 4 here so something like that and then 15 it goes something like that. so this is the new shape of EMF a force is required to rotate the coil explain why the size of the force increases when the lamp is connected to the output of the generator connecting lamp causes because see if you go back to your uh, coil there is no lamp it is just you know emf produce and but you connect some lamp with this coil so the emf causes current to flow from this coil and the current starts flowing because the lamp has to you know run with the bulb so the the, the circuit will complete the current keep flowing in the coil that means a conductor placed in a magnetic field having current in this case an opposing force acts on 
the conductor which is if you recall bell sine theta this is the force on a current carrying conductor so due to current flowing current starts flowing in the conductor and then uh, we need you know extra force to keep uh, coil rotating so that's how you can explain Question number 17, the Large Hadron Collider LHC was built to further our understanding of the standard model of matter. The LHC has produced a baryon with the largest mass yet observed. The Xi B baryon has a mass of 5.9 giga electron volt per C square, which is more than six times of mass of the proton. Show that the mass of uh, Xi B baryon is more than six times of mass of the proton. Basically, what do you need to do? You need to convert this mass, which is given in giga electron volt per c square into kg. And then compare this mass with the mass of one proton. So let's convert 5.9. So 5.9 giga, giga means 10 to the power 9. Electron volt, you convert this into joule. So 1.6, 10 to the power minus 19 joule. Divided by c square, so c is speed of light. So 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square if you solve all these things so the mass of uh, 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 x or xi b whatever you say mass of xi it should be coming around uh, 1.048 into 10 to the power minus 26 kilogram and now you just compare mass of uh, xi divided by mass of the proton that means 1.048 10 to the power minus 26 divided by mass of the proton 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 you can find this mass in your uh, data sheet or it is good if you remember this mass to save your time and when you solve this so you have answer 6.275 or you can say approximately 6.3 so mass of x xi is equal to 6.3 times of mass of the proton so it is greater six times greater more than six times greater the LHC accelerates two beam of protons to a very high energy before colliding them explain why protons need high energies to produce such particle as IB a typical question of particle collision why do we need high energy particles because we need to create or produce massive particles and the mass of the proton mass of the both of the proton is much less than uh, sorry is much less than mass of the xi we need extra mass that can accumulate or you know accumulate here and this extra mass comes from the kinetic energy given to the proton according to e is equal to mc square all the mass all the energy can convert into mass according to this equation so we need kinetic energy that can convert uh, extra mass that is you know we need to produce so that's how you can uh, write your answer the xi uh, baryon traveled 0.47 millimeter in detector before decaying the lifetime of the xi baryon is 1.42 to 10 to the power minus 12 second calculate the speed of xi baryon using the values and comments your answer fine so we need to find a speed so a speed is a distance traveled by divided by time distance is 0 0.47 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by time is 1.42 10 to the power minus 12 and when you solve this the so velocity will be equal to 3.3 into 10 to the power 8 meter second inverse which is impossible it is impossible why because velocity is coming greater than c which is not possible we cannot be v cannot be greater than c that means there must be some error in measurement error in 
measurement but there is one thing that the particle xi b is uh, traveling close to speed of light so velocity of uh, xi is approximately close to uh, a speed of light but it is not equal to speed of light or no, it cannot be greater so that's what you uh, need to write the discovery of this particle was made public on LHC website and shared with other scientific organization give one reason why the process of open communication is important in science definitely whenever you find some new uh, observations you share because you need some comments you need the validation of your uh, of your uh, discovery and you also need some peer reviewed so that's what you can say suggest the benefit of continuing to invest in the complex experiments such as those involved in particle physics uh, of course you always need a new data new evidence uh, to support already existing theories or maybe to develop new theories thank you very much i hope you understand and see you in the next video take care